The coming months and years, I'll work closely with all of our NATO allies to enhance this partnership and to adapt to the challenges of the future, of which there will be many. Ladies and gentlemen, our next guest, Karen Travers, getting whiplash in, <laughs> uh, because of all the policy changes President Trump making in the last 48 hours. Good morning, White House correspondent Karen Travers. Good morning. I mean, there are so many places we could start, so go ahead. <laughs> All right, so he now hates Russia, loves mm -hmm. China, no longer a manipulating currency, um, and is uh, likes Janet Yellen and yeah. uh, likes the Import-Export Bank. All yes. the things he railed against during the campaign he now loves? It's pretty incredible. It's not even just an evolving position on these things. This is literally in one interview. One interview with the Wall Street Journal. There are three significant policy shifts or even reversals uh, from what he said on the campaign trail. And I think here's something to look at. As we talk about all this palace intrigue of who's up and who's down and, and Steve Bannon's on the outs and who's the real influencer in the West Wing, things like this are where that matters. It's not just Washington gossip because this is clearly showing a significant influence in our perspective of Gary Cohn, who is uh, one of the top guys at Goldman, who's now leading the president's economic team. He is much more liberal. He's a Democrat. Jared Kushner, also more of a track record of supporting Democratic candidates. These aren't the populist views that Steve Bannon and his uh, allies are, have been pushing that were big parts of the campaign message. This is a big deal. It's wonky. It's, you know, in-depth policy. But it's a significant shift by the president. And, and I'm actually, I've been writing a note uh, to my editors on this. Imagine if eight years ago, on day 83, President Obama said, we're going to stay in Iraq. I'm not going to push to close Gitmo. And forget the Recovery Act. And sorry, Detroit, you're on your own, all the automakers. You know, four significant things he talked about on the campaign trail. It would be a huge story. No question about it. Not, not to mention, he is saying, the, Trump is saying the exact same things President Obama was saying <laughs> during right. his, while he was in office. And, you know, some of these things are going to be welcomed in Washington as more moderating positions by the president and also just practical positions. There was a comment I heard earlier this morning from an analyst saying, you know, the, these are good things because they make sense. When you're trying to negotiate with China on a very critical issue like North Korea, it's probably not the time to lob a rhetorical bomb and call them a currency manipulator. Janet Yellen is a stabilizing force at the Fed. I mean, there's a sense in Washington of that. And the Export-Import Bank, I mean, that's been a political fight for years. So these things might be welcomed by some lawmakers, but the populist supporters of Donald Trump out uh, there who voted for him, this is a big deal from what he said as a candidate. It's not surprising. Surprising that Washington would like the things he's right. saying because he ran against Washington and right. Washington was upset with him because he didn't agree with the traditional quote unquote Washington. So mm -hmm. if you're a voter out here in the Midwest in St. Louis or one of these places where sent him to Washington, any blowback, I know it's, it's, this mm -hmm. interview just happened, any blowback from the wing of the party that actually sent the man to the White House. We haven't seen that just yet. I mean, one thing, Congress is off. It's, you know, kind of a, a holiday week for religious, you know, uh, holidays. So it, it's a little quieter here in Washington. So you haven't seen everybody rushing to cameras. And they're actually off next week, too. But I think it's something to pay attention to over the coming weeks of when you present this. And like I said, it's pretty wonky. You know, these are a lot of economic issues that we all had to do some reading on just right. to make sure we're up to speed. It's not as simple as the president said this and now he says this. What do you think? But it does signify perhaps a larger theme of shifting away from some of that flame throwing rhetoric on the campaign trail to things that actually work in Washington. Uh, you know, it's very easy to say drain the swamp as a candidate. It was very easy for President Obama to talk about changing Washington, hope and change. The reality is when you get into that office, it's really difficult. Yeah, no, but 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 the import export bank, which is one of those things that's been mm -hmm. a inside baseball fight. Absolutely. Uh, the Freedom Caucus hates it. Uh, he hates ra it. he railed against it and now mm -hmm. and now he turns out he loves it, I guess. 
Yeah, and, and it's also been one of those political footballs in negotiations with other issues that the Freedom Caucus was using this to hold up other things. And I just want to point out, you know, right now it's a quiet week in Washington. Next week, Congress is still out. That following week, the week of April 24th, is going to be bonkers here. Congress has essentially given itself five days to come up with a spending bill to keep the government running. Five days. And all of the things that we saw with the health care debacle of whose side was fighting for this, who was drawing a hard line here, there, you're going to see those similar factions jumping in on the spending bill of what they want to include, what they don't want to include. If they can't come to an agreement by the end of that week, we could be looking at another government shutdown on the president's 100th day in office. Uh, Karen Travers, side note quickly, uh, in all of these, this talk with President Trump, did anybody ask him about Sean Spicer's gaffe? He was asked about this in the Wall Street Journal interview, I believe. Yes, he did. It was in the Wall Street Journal interview, and he said he made a mistake. That's all. Kept okay. it very simple. There you go. Karen Travers, um, thank you very much on a very busy, busy 24 hours. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Thanks. Karen Travers, ABC News White House correspondent, who, by the way, can I just say that now that she's not here, is fantastic. <laughs> you don't want her to hear that. She's so good, and I loved how she used the word wonky. <laughs> she was like, you know, it's all a little bit wonky. I don't want to tell. I don't want to say it to She's her face very, because very reporters good. don't like. You know, they don't like to be part of the story and all that. Yeah. Whereas we do. My bottom line is this. I like her. I think she's really good. I think she's... She's very good. Very good. Yes, we're lucky to have her. 628. 